Welcome to another exciting episode of Kazu Big Boy Trev. As always, we endeavor to give you the latest news and reviews from across the world. Right now, we are at the International Frankfurt Motor Show and we have an amazing show, including. But first things first, let's check out the news. So guys, welcome to CBBT News where we give you the lowdown on what's happening across the world. And we are at the center, the heart of the motoring industry in Germany, Frankfurt. And we have a few things we need to discuss. Let's start. Porsche Taycan. This is the first Porsche vehicle that is fully electric. And of course, they are aiming at the likes of Tesla and Jaguar with the I-Pace having a car that is amazingly fast, electric, and of course, still has the true pedigree of a Porsche. Mr. Muri, what do you think about this particular car? I love electric vehicles. Uh, we checked out the i when you're in South Africa. Yes. That acceleration is mind-blowing. So just combining that with Porsche's handling must make that thing an incredible vehicle. Yes. And then the fact that there's no engine means that it has a lot more space than your traditional car. So it's actually shorter than a Panamera, but has more space in, on the interior, making it a full four-seater saloon, but with the kind of power, the speed, the handling, the fantasticness of a Porsche. Yeah. I mean, it is one of the cars that's the fastest around the... Nabagring. Uh, Nabagring. Yes. Uh, we understand Elon Musk has said that he's also going to put the P100D, the Model X, through the Nabagring. Yes. Uh, how do you think it's going to do? Uh, I'm not too sure. You know, Americans love cars <laughs> and drive cars on a straight line. Yeah. So we don't know how it's going to handle, but we'll wait and see. I think the time that Porsche did was 7 minutes 43, yeah. which is pretty fast. It's in the league of, uh, say, the Nissan GTR at that time when it started. Uh, it did around the same time. So it is pretty fast for a four-door saloon that's quite heavy and still gives you good range. 348 kilometers, of course. Uh, it has a 90 kilowatt battery. And of course, you do have a combined torque figure of 1,083 Newton meters. 1,000. Do you know what 1,000 means? That is power that you can tag a 747 jet or an A380 without ease. Remember, the Touareg did the same thing. It is so that. powerful that for the first time, it actually has a gearbox on the rear wheel. So it only has two gears, one for that rapid acceleration when you want to do like a, a launch mode. Yes. Uh, for some reason, they're actually calling it the Turbo and the Turbo S, which yes. is interesting because it's an electric vehicle. Yeah. But it's one of the fastest things that Porsche sells at the moment. And it's interesting that it's full electric. Now, while we are still on German electric vehicles, it's important to see that uh, we've checked out the Mercedes-Benz EQ. C. Yes. They also have the EQV electric van, which is now the, the Mercedes V-Class available yes. as a full electric vehicle. So what are your thoughts on the Germans going electric? I, I think they've come in a little bit late in the game. They're normally the ones who lead this race. Remember, it was the Japanese who started this with the likes of the Price Hybrid, then into the Mitsubishi iMiv, then now the Americans with the Tesla. They've gone all out. It's become a, a favorite with many. And now the Germans are now into the game. And you know when it's German, you know it's efficiency, you know, it's long built, good quality, and of course, it's going to be the future. If you look, if you look at the Mercedes range, now they've got a car that will, you know, compete with the likes of the e-tron Audi, which is in the same category. It's it's an SUV that is full electric, and then you do have the Jaguar I-Pace. So it's a very competitive place. We actually rode one yesterday with the shuttle around here, and I can tell you, it is so quiet you can't even imagine it's electric. And of course, you do have the typical traditional Mercedes layout. You have new technology with M M MBUX, MBUX of course, yes. which you'll see the feature later on. And of course, you do have a, a lot of safety. But we are hoping that DDW, which is the local dealer for Mercedes, will at one time consider bringing this car into Kenya. Hyundai is coming back to Kenya officially. They are setting up yes. the Mombasa Road. Very wide range of vehicles that are going to be coming in. It's going to be in partnership with Caetano yes. out of Portugal. So they're bringing their heavyweights yes. to this market. What cars are they going to be bringing? What are we expecting to see? From the top end, Santa Fe Premium, which is brand new. Watch out for the re review coming soon. And of course, you do have the Tucson. You have the Iconic, which is an electric vehicle. It's going to be a show car, but it's coming anyway. And of course, you do have the Krita, which is a tiny sort of crossover that will uh, compete to the likes of the Suzuki Vitara. And of course, the Duster, which is also from Renault. Now, this new partnership will bring uh, brands, of course, in Kenya, Hyundai and Renault together. And of course, you do have adequate backup and service courtesy of Caetano. Caetano are actually very big in West and South Africa. So it's, they're not playing, they're bringing out the whole range of Hyundai. And of course, the Hyundai experience will be 
vital for existing customers who had lost faith in the brand. Now they're able to service and get new cars courtesy of Hyundai. So with uh, the Golf R taking over the performance car space in Kenya, yes, yes. you see them bringing the i30N? Well, I probably think so because the i30N is a chief rival of the Golf. It's been designed by a German, a South Korean vehicle that's been designed by a German, Mr. Bimiman, who was in, actually in charge of the M Sport division. M Sport and BMW are the makers of the M5, the M3, all the M's you can think of. And of course, I've brought that expertise to Hyundai. Already, you can see Hyundai winning uh rallies in kenya and of course next year is going to be a rally in kenya as well so you can be able to see how the hyundai i20n will make its debut in kenya and probably have a sporty version in the cabin of the Mazda CX-7 I can tell you the design is based on the code of philosophy that Mazda has employed throughout its design actually for the last six seven years Mazda has been employing the Kodo philosophy which actually means soul well designed well laid out nothing too fancy it's got that minimalistic design so we have less buttons and knobs to confuse you while driving and of course you can see the quality of the dash you do have stitched leather on the dash and of course wood trim and right below you you do have some stainless steel accents that enhances the premium quality of this particular car and as you can see on the instrument binnacle you do have three dials you have one for the tachometer the other one for the speedometer and of course the digital multi-information display that said the center console actually houses this seven inch multi-information display which is color it's called the mzd connect and actually houses navigation that works in kenya you have an audio system actually it's a bose sound system 10 speakers 800 watts that sounds like this i'm telling you the sound on this thing is just amazing if you love the clarity the crispness of the sound then bose system comes as standard and this top spec signature mazda cx5 that said of course you do have um, other connectivity options you do have apple carplay and android auto which are now part and parcel of every car that's coming out in the industry you have the dual zone climate control so the goodness about this is that you're able to control the different aspects of temperature within the cabin so as a driver if i love cool 21 degrees and the passenger is feeling a bit uh, cold and want heat they can actually control the different aspects of the temperature without affecting or interfering with each other the vents actually at the back as well you can actually control some of the air that's going into the passenger so everybody remains cool calm and collected and again you do have seat coolers this one doesn't have seat warmers it has seat coolers so it gets very hot like it's gonna get in december then you can actually enjoy the cx5 in Mombasa, driving down with your vest no sweating because the leather seats are perforated for added safety you do have heads up display that gives you all the information that's on the instrument binnacle is displayed here on the windscreen The seats actually are very supportive. As you can see, big boy with the big Kitambi is actually comfortable. The distance here between me and the steering wheel is quite big. And actually, it does have tilt and telescopic steering. So you can actually adjust the steering based on your taste and preference if you're tall enough or short enough. And actually, the seats are actually powered uh, with about 14 way power seats. You can actually tilt and retract the seats based on your height. And of course, you do have memory setting for three other passengers or drivers are going to drive this particular car we're going to move to the back and see what mr murigi has to say about the comfort of the mazda cx5 at the back so you don't have to be driving the cx5 to enjoy it right here at the back it's an amazing place to be leather seats they're not cooled like the way they are in the front but there's a lot of space trevor is six foot flat and his this seat is set for trevor's uh trevor's height and over here there's a lot of space for my leg room very easy for me to put my feet under here actually very comfortable for me to sit here at the back we also have ac and one of the most interesting things i've seen so far 
there's actually two USB ports at the back here and, and cup holders also for the people at the back, making this a very interesting place to sit and be driven when in your Mazda CX-5. Let's go check out the boot and see what it has in extra productivity. Coming to the rear of the CX-5, first thing I have to talk about is the power tailgate. Fantastic feature of lots of German cars have, but it has come to the Japanese as well. Takes a bit of a while to open, but it is worth it because in here you have an amazing boot. Very wide, very open. The wheel latches don't intrude into the boot. Of course, you have a 12 volt socket, tie down points, and very interestingly, a space saver, space spare tire, and a subwoofer for that boat system that Trevor loves so much. So let's check out how this thing feels on the road. Get it on the road and feel some of this zoom zoom energy that Mazda gives us on the road with Trevor. Stay tuned. So time has moved on, we're in the swinging 30s and I can tell you at that time there was a big boom. Henry Ford had his Model T and he was selling it in the thousands. But Mercedes-Benz were actually looking at the future, efficiency, a thing that they have actually had in heart for so many years. This behind me is the Mercedes 320, the world's first aerodynamic saloon car. And I can tell you from the time when the Model Ts were actually looking like carriage horses, this was a new design, so streamlined, it was the best way to travel on the autobahn with this particular car. So this over here is the world's oldest automobile. It's basically the first time that a car looked and felt like what we drive today. The engine in the front, the drive wheels in the back, it had a clutch, brake, steering wheel, everything that we find, even, even a, a handbrake, everything that we find normal in a car right now, this is the first example of that the car the way we know it. So guys, the war is over, Mercedes are now rebuilding, making cars for the future, and they had to get into motorsports. Right behind me is five-time world champion, Juan Manuel Fangio's car that made him a champion five times, just telling people that Mercedes were back, and back in business, then the business of motorsports, and they've been doing this for so many years. All the way from the 60s and the 70s, they had amazing touring car championships from of course, the W116, all the way to the 126 and, and the 123s that were making progress in as far as motoring is concerned. Now, the best part of it all, Formula One. When Mercedes got back to Formula One, they had a partnership with uh, a British team called McLaren. Now, they had that car called the McLaren Mercedes, and this gentleman by the name of Mika Hakkinen, led them to their first World Championship since one Emmanuel Fangio in 1999 with this particular car, the Mercedes McLaren. Again, over the years, it spread again, and they had a title-winning car again in 2008 with the likes of Lewis Hamilton piloting that car, the MP4, that one over there, the Vodafone series. And then, again, back to the turbo hybrid era, Nico Rosberg won this particular car with a new design, new generation of uh, engines with that particular, the W06. This Hamilton continues to dominate the World Championship because of Mercedes' ability to use technology and efficiency to win races, to have an exciting series. So we know that is the future of Mercedes-Benz. The story of Mercedes-Benz is not complete if we don't talk about what Mercedes has contributed in terms of road safety and technology. The father of the automotive road safety is Bella Barrieni. In 1959, with the car behind him, which is a 220S, this was a car that they tested the first energy-absorbing crumple zones that dissipates heat from the cabin all the way to the exterior and the chassis, preventing damage on, and injury to passengers. Bella Barrieni also included active safety elements in that particular car, like the anti-sway bars. Now, this allowed the car to remain stable even while cornering because now the, the energy that it would dissipate on the axles will be able to be sustained and make the car become laterally straight, avoiding you to topple over. And that was a big thing because from then on, the W116, the 123, 126 all had swabers and that was a new invention for active safety. Now the car that is here, this is the experimental and they call it the ESF22 for this particular car. In 1968, Mercedes-Benz actually started thinking about putting anti-lock braking system. Now what ABS does, it prevents locking of the wheels during an emergency so that you're able to swerve around. But this was an experimental car because they had a collaboration with Robert Bosch Technologies, which is just down the road, and they managed to put 
and test this car for over 10 years, 1 million miles, how ABS works. And in 1978, with the debut of the 126, ABS made its debut in that particular car and also airbags. 1973, they had already started doing trial runs on how to prevent injury by using of airbags. And at that time, uh, General Motors was still leading in that field. But soon after the 123 and the festive started, they began to assemble and assess the use of airbags and it made its way fast on the 126 Mercedes Benz S Class. That's why it's called Sonda Class because it has all the latest and best technology for you to avoid accidents and to be safe while on the road. Of course, we can't complete by saying that the W140 came in, it was the first car with ESP back in 1996, and of course, now. The W220 and 221 and 222 continue to the progress with pre-safe and so many things that now makes you and driving at one. Technology through passion and safety. The best or nothing. So guys, you've seen how practical this particular guy is. Um, plenty of space, plenty of technology, plenty of features that can make any modern family happy. But the question still remains, if you're the dad and you love performance, does this car live up to the Mazda Zoom Zoom expectation, philosophy of power, of oneness? We're gonna find out now, as we're gonna take you through some of the curves on the Kiambu ring. So guys, we've seen how practical this particular car is. There's plenty of uh, cubby holes and spaces, practical, very luxurious, comfortable, and the level of technology is amazing. My question is, as the driver, do you get engagement in this particular car? We're going to find out if this car handles like a proper German. Well, German because Germans are the benchmark of handling. Now, up front, you do have a 2.5 liter engine, petrol, 16 valve, with variable valve timing and variable cylinder shutoff that allows this car to accelerate like this listen to that now that is the sound of 140 kilowatts and 252 newton meters of torque supplied to the four wheels courtesy of a six speed automatic and of course it turn a good fuel consumption figure of roughly about 11 kilometers to the liter which is good remember Nairobi too much traffic this car gives you the best of both worlds Now in terms of handling, this particular car up front has McPherson struts that are tuned with a long stroke setup to allow maximum undulation of particular suspension to absorb the road imperfection and the back you do have multi-link setup. Now something interesting about Mazda, they have actually gone ahead with something called chassis control. They've introduced something called the G-Vector Ring Force which allows you to handle and give this car a certain feel of a sports car. Remember Mazda are known for the RX-9, the MX-5. All these cars are sporty because of the chassis. Now they've improved it by having this G-Force vectoring control that allows you, or allows the gearbox to shift the loads of the torque. Especially when you're cornering, it will shift the load to the front courtesy of the central differential. And of course, in terms of braking, and you need stability on the road, then you do have torque vectoring by braking. Now the ABS and ESP system work hand in hand to ensure that the wheel breakfast distribution is sent to the outer wheels that allows this car to be stable under braking, under cornering and gives that feel. Safety, critical aspect in most cars. This car is a mix of active and passive safety features, active ESP, electronic stability control, ABS, brake assist. You have lane departure warning, you do have cross traffic alert. All the names you can ever think of, all the anonyms for this particular uh, safety systems, you can find it in the Mazda CX-5. But in case all the hell breaks loose, then you can rely on the strong structure of the passenger cell, which is actually rated at 5 star Euro end cap safety rating. And of course, safety belts and you have multiple airbags across the cabin to keep you and your family 
safe from harm. You think I've said too much. What are your thoughts on the handling of this car? I mean, it really feels really good. Um, it's a four-wheel drive, so these, these corners you're taking, it's taking it really good. And then also, it's not leaning into the, the mm. corners the way you would do in an SUV. Yes. We are very used to this track. We review a lot of cars on this road. Yes. And I'm not feeling any more different than any of the other cars we've been doing here. It feels like a saloon car. It just feels, it has that feeling. Well, one thing actually I want to compliment Mazda for is the ability to reduce the noise vibration and harshness within the car. Yeah. So a lot of padding within the cabin, within the engine bay, the firewall. So it actually feels like you're driving a passenger car like a Mazda 6, which you know a Mazda 6 is also an amazing vehicle that competes the likes of the Passat and the Subaru Legacy and many other cars within that category. But it shows that manufacturers are now paying keen attention on crossovers and SUVs because remember, in the next five years they're going to account for 50 percent of total vehicle sales and that's why this particular segment is super competitive so guys what do you think about the mazda cx5 let us know on your social media handles below as we go and do a value for money analysis courtesy of cars with big boy truck you've seen how the cx5 performs on our roads comfortable it's spacious it's peppy it handles well and of course there's tons of technology question is what are the key rivals of this particular car everybody who sells cars in kenya has a compact suv nowadays and so this is competing with almost everyone it's a very packed segment so you're looking at the hyundai tucson the pujo 3008 the toyota rav4 the bmw x3 and very very many others so the question remains Trevor yes why would you pick this over any of the other rivals I think for me the styling does it for me the Kodo fluidic motion this Japanese way of interpreting design is just different it's made Mazda become so aggressive sadly that's it folks thank you so much for joining us but before we go how much is it so the prices for the Mazda CX-5 start at 5.9 million shillings Financing is available from CMC, so again, the pricing is extremely, extremely aggressive. Yes, and competitive, okay? And also comes a 300,000 kilometer warranty, which is standard across board. And of course, you can rely on CMC's network across Kenya to maintain your CX-5. If you're going to road trip in Kisumu, in Nyeri, in Mombasa, in Nakuru, you can actually get service parts and sales of the CX-5. Sadly, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. On this occasion of cars big boy tribe as usual if you have any questions comments or queries don't hesitate right to us as seen on our social media handles below signing out live and direct from limuru this is big boy tribe this is murigi drive safe and be safe